Hey guys, so with 1.3 is coming out after 1.2, obviously, the dear people over in Oyo has the lead characters. Lynx is one of them. And if you don't know, Lynx is Japard and her sister, the third of the Land Alpha. She's a really interesting character with a really interesting kid. I think it's something that you guys should really look out for. She's rare in the sense that she's a Paladin's character, and she's also Quantum, which is interesting, but she's 4 star, of course. Being another Abundance character, for, the, for those of you that are currently stuck with only, like, having Natasha, and you didn't get Locha, her being a 4 star, something you can really use and look forward to. I'm pretty sure, based on her kit and how things sound and how they're going to be with her, she's going to be flat out better than Natasha and it's quite sad. Natasha is currently being power crept out of the game, right? Bailu was already her top one contender, but now that uh Locha is out, Locha outscales Natasha by a hundred and then Bailu by like forty, fifty percent. So there's not much love for Natasha, but you guys will love Link. What Lynx can do is quite interesting. Right? He's essentially March, but for healing. And it's really crazy how that's going to work out. It sounds weird on paper, but when you think about it, it's like, oh crap. For certain upcoming characters, hint, hint, Blade, Jing Liu, she's going to be crazy. She's going to be really good. Especially Blade. The title and the thumbnail says it all, but this is quite literally a character that you will be pairing up with Blade more than I think you will be pairing her up with Locha. Remember how I was discussing in my other video, that like, hey, if Blade and March were to work together, that would be great because of the um, targeting thing, right? The targeting thing. The targeting ability that March has with her shield. Well, if we look at Link's skill, right? Picketed Camping Tin. She applies excitement to a single ally, which increases their max HP by whatever percent based on this max HP, which lasts for an unknown turn, which is probably going to be like two or three turns. Like, we're going to be real. Like, two, two or three turns. Probably three. If the target's current HP is greater or equal to than whatever percent, Greatly increases their base chance of being targeted by the enemy. Now, that is really huge. That is why we love Lynx. We need to know how much is the current HP greater or equal to that. If it's 50%, then that's it. Blade has like has a character to, to function with. If it's above 75, we still use Blade because even afterwards, the following sentence and make the target restore HP equal to of Lynx's max HP plus whatever. Excitement can only take effect on the most recent target that was cast on, right? What this means is huge. It's a targeted max HP increase and an aggro gain and a heal on top of that. For Blade, this means that he will always be triggering his talent. He will always be holding aggro and he will just be an unstoppable force to be reckoned with. I don't think there is another character besides Locha and Jing Liu that can synergize this well. Right, with, with with Blade and Link. This is, um, it's actually kind of insane that we're getting another character that does target in, because the ability to forcefully choose, um, aggro is really powerful. One reason why I value March quite heavily is because of that fact. If you put your shield on a DPS, they then can gain all charge, 
they then take up most of the damage and blah 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 it's a good thing and it's a massive shield and we know blade's gonna scale up from max hp so the more max hp he has the greater his attack is the greater his everything is and that's also another thing the more max hp blade has the more damage he deals what does lynx do increase their max hp heal and give a target i don't think there can be anything else blade would want in a skill right for example if you put clara's light clone clone clara's light clone and links together with blade blade is actually unkillable because clara's light cone it gives him a small amount of healing but the defense he gains and the attack boost that he gains is like bro he becomes such a tank and the fact that we can target them to say yo go and hit blade right blade attacks defense up he gets attacked defense up and he heals like he is such a massive wall that it's like any battle you're in it does not matter blade is out surviving them we already knew blade was going to be a monster already but with this oh with this it just like ensures that blade is never dying and i'm pretty sure this makes it so that blade actually can't die in some way right because blade we know that he just flickers his max hp back and resets it so it's like what does this really matter you know like I can take all the damage I want and I'll be fine. Now, if if excitement has a cleanse, then oh my god, that's just insane. And speaking of cleanses, we go to the oh snowfield first aid knowledge dispels all debuffs on allies and restores HP for all allies equal to Lin's max HP. Whatever the dispel all debuffs. That is a huge sentence right there. Because Locha, Locha, Natasha, March, they can only dispel one debuff at a time. But with this, dispel all debuffs on all allies? Oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to control myself with this character. Lynx and Blade, it's going to be a real ignorant combination. And I'm so excited for that. This is a combination that I really want to have happen. I must play with these two characters, knowing what they're going to do. Because, like, let's say we have Jing Liu, Blade, uh, Lynx, and, um, hold, hold on. Let, 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 let's actually go real quick. But, yeah, if we build a team of, like, Lynx, Blade, and then we swap in there for some, like, Jing Liu, and... We know that with that team, right? We know that those three already synergize with each other. Jing Liu, when, the, when she enters her trance, it triggers Blade. Blade will then trigger his talent. Lynx can then target Blade, so Blade will constantly be sapping his HP, healing, and also triggering, tri triggering his talent. With this team, Blade has a reliable way to constantly dish out DPS. Jing Liu doesn't have to worry about killing her teammates too much. And Lynx can dispel and have that emergency heal anytime she wants. Like, this character already does what Natasha does, and she just does it better. Then if you take a look at her talent, while she's casting her skill or her ultimate, she restores HP for whatever turns. At the beginning of each turn, restore HP equal to whatever percent of Lynx's match HP for all for allies with excitement. Restore additional HP of Lynx's max HP. Right? This is pretty good. It's just a, this is literally just a regen. Right. So technique, chocolate energy bar. Restore all allies HP. And that's pretty cool, actually. For talent, that is, it just being a it just being a basic regen. Which I think is fine, to be honest with you, because that regen can come in handy, as we know, with like Bailu's Bailu's invigoration. Whenever that gets triggered, it it could be a lifesaver. And with Blade and Jing Liu on the team, it's like, oh, okay, you know, 
I don't have to worry about HP. I can just slap that on and keep going and still be in a skill point positive, which I think that's pretty cool. With Lynx, she's a very much a skill point positive character because excitement with the target and then the team that I'm talking about, you don't have to worry about skill points. You just slap excitement on Blade and you just watch him go to work. That's it. It lasts for that many turns, right? Plus he gets a regen. Just don't worry about him, honestly. You seem to worry about your O and the dispel. Like, and, and that's and that's the truth of the matter. Skill points don't matter with links in this team. For traces, when an ally with excitement is hit, links will restore energy. That's pretty cool. Builds up her ult faster. Then her next trace at the beginning of each turn dispels buff on self. What? She dispels a debuff on herself at the beginning of each turn? That's like a trace you would see on a five star character. Or it would be built into like a skill as a passive. That's crazy. So if she gets imprisoned one turn or frozen, she can just say, No, I'm done. The like 18 stacks of bleed that the die wolf is going to give her does not exist. It's not real, guys. You don't have to worry about it. Then for her third trace, when an ally is hit and their current HP is less than of their max HP, Link's speed will increase, which I think it's cool. A healer having a speed increase is also nice. More skill points, more chances for you to heal and do other things. That's good. All in all, Link's kit looking really, really solid. It's looking actually really good. And I'm excited to see what Lynx can do when she comes out. I already know what she can do. And I really want her for Blade. And truth be told, that's going to be my go-to healer for Blade, Lynx. They just work so well together. There's no point not to use Lynx with Blade. I can't think of a scenario where that won't be the case, unless it's a typing issue. But, yeah. That's it for Lynx. She's a really cool character. And I can't wait till she comes out. Catch you guys later. See you in the next video.